So, I want you to come back to remember uh, these four equations, okay? We're looking at, we'd be looking rather, at simple harmonic motion. And we develop these equations to say, okay, harmonic motion is about when you've got this um, oscillating kind of idea, things that go up and down, predictably, or left and right, or whatever it is. And what makes these simple is a simple, a single rather, trig function hiding beneath the motion. Okay, so it's very, very predictable. You basically need to know your amplitude, your frequency, your phase. If you like, you can change the center of motion. That's it. You know everything about it. Uh, the most recent thing we saw was, even though we say there's a single trig function behind it, what was the most recent thing we looked at at the end of last week? Do you remember? Yeah, very good. We can express it if it's convenient to us. Good morning. Even though there's only one trig function really underneath, if it's convenient to us, we can express it as like, you know, some cos squared or sine squared or something like that. Or even as the sum of a sine and a cosine. Why might we do that, by the way? That was the most recent example we looked at. Why would we express it as two trig functions, the sum of two rather than one? So we have to evaluate like tangent versus like two pi or nine. Okay, yeah, very good. When you try to find the phase, right? Good morning. This phase here, this alpha. Sometimes you have to appeal to some sort of messy trig functions and you don't really want to have to do that. So if you can sort of craft things, if you do auxiliary angle in reverse and say, I don't want to have an alpha, I just want to have an nt, and therefore I account for that by good morning, having two trig functions, sometimes that's all a lot neater, okay? Now that's the most recent thing we looked at. So where I want to take us from here is another implication of, um, of these expressions, right? One of the first things we encountered when we were meeting simple harmonic motion is that each of these, good morning, good morning. each of these leads us, if you recall, to a velocity function and an acceleration function. But the acceleration function for simple harmonic motion, in both cases, was really nice and neat. Does anyone remember what it is for the first basic case when you've got motion about the origin? It's minus n squared x. So if, if you differentiate twice, if you differentiate twice, uh, what happens is each time you differentiate because of the chain rule, right, you get an extra factor of n. You remember that, right? Um, sine will turn into cosine, the first differentiation, to get to velocity. The second differentiation, to get to acceleration. The cosine will turn into negative sine, right? So... Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, so sine, cosine, negative sine, you're back at x, but there's a minus sign along for the right, right? Now, do you remember, good morning, what does that negative indicate? Well, what's, what's that there for? Yeah, okay, so we, whichever side of the origin you are about, right? you're accelerating in the opposite direction, right? So if you're on the positive side, you're gonna accelerate in the negative direction, which is what sends you back to the center. And if you're on the negative side, you're accelerating back toward the positive side, which again, sends you back to the center, which is what makes it simple common motion. Uh, in the same way, when we did it for this, because what you've got here, once you do the first differentiation, good morning, as soon as you've done that, this B disappears, right? So therefore, what difference do we get here? It's still X negative n squared? X X B. Yeah, very good. Because what you'll get is, down the bottom, um, first derivative will be a cos nt plus alpha. The second derivative will be negative a sine nt plus alpha, which is everything except for the b. Yes? Mm -hmm. Now, do we, are our sides right? Does that look right? Yeah. 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 Because you plus you have to add a b and then a minus b. Okay, so um, the important thing I want to know out for both of these, right, is that they are differential equations and they take us away, like both of these expressions here, they take us away from our reliance on time. Okay, you can know what your acceleration is without knowing when you are. All you need to know is where you are. Okay, so this important idea, which we've met through simple harmonic motion. It should ring some bells because we looked at this under natural growth in the K. Do you remember this? You can say for, you don't need to write this part. For some population, we actually began for natural growth in the K by saying the definition is you're proportional to your population. Right? And then we said, oh, exponential functions, they satisfy this differential equation. Okay? So in other words, you can express rates of change, right? Or acceleration, etc. 
without knowing when, you just need to know what you're actually equal to, or, or in this case, where you are, okay? So in our context for motion, that's the, the little domain we're in at the moment, we're gonna call this um, motion as functions of, rather than functions of time, right, which is when you are, these are functions of displacement, where you are, right? Functions of displacement. So we can express velocity acceleration rather than tell me when. We can express them as tell me, tell me where, okay? And this, by the way, and this is leaning towards into mechanics rather than kinematics, but even as to your extension one students, you can understand why this happens. Remember I showed you the rubber band, right? And the rubber band, even if you don't worry about, whoop, where we go, here it is. Even if you don't worry about the exact nature of like string tension and direction, all that kind of thing, it sort of makes sense that the further away you are, like where you are, dictates the kind of acceleration that's acting on you, right? Or if you want to think about, say, um, an object that's orbiting around a star, well, where you are in relation to the star, the closer you are, the more acceleration you're experiencing towards the star, right? Does that make sense? So where is a natural way to think about things in a lot of physical situations?